When out filming wildlife, sometimes things go wrong. Now listen, I love rain just as much as the next guy, but too much rain during short adventures like these definitely aren't the best. But hey, we're here, so we're gonna make the best of it. North Florida is home to a wide variety of animals, and some of them can still be found during these super rainy periods. Well, it's starting to rain on us out here, which is not the best for pretty much anything that we're looking for, especially this time of year. But this rain is hopefully gonna wake up some amphibians. Now, since it isn't super warm and it's pretty much the morning time, I doubt we're gonna see anything. But for later on, when it clears up, this is gonna be really good for a lot of different frog species in this area. There's actually some incredibly rare frog species that live around here. And that's what I've been hoping to see for a while. Hopefully this rain blows over. If not, I can always come out here tomorrow morning. It should be sunny then. Hopefully we'll see one then. Have a look at this. That is a newborn intermediate musk turtle. Little tiny guy, he's got a little pink belly there. This is a pretty common species in this part of Florida. And that is a newborn hatchling. Now in this part, late summer, early fall, we're gonna be getting a lot of hatchlings. A lot of little tiny things being born or being hatched. And this guy would have hatched pretty recently. As you can see there, he is tiny. This is actually considered to be the smallest turtle you can possibly see here in North America. In fact, correct me if I'm wrong, they might even be the smallest turtles in the world, baby musk when they're first born. But with this rain, it's not likely we're going to see any snakes moving around, but could be good for amphibians, could be good for other things around this water. I'm going to go ahead and let this little guy go. We're going to keep looking for more, but this is a little intermediate musk turtle. After a whole day of torrential downpour, next morning, while it's still a little bit wet, it was back to being a bit cleared up. And all that crazy rain last night is actually great for bringing out one animal in particular, frogs. And in this region, just so happens to live North America's largest native tree frog. Have a look at this little frog. This is actually our largest native frog here in North America. That's a barking tree frog. These guys love these little longleaf pine spanners. They look kind of like a green tree frog, but they're covered in little spots. And they get about three times the size of your average green tree frog. This would be considered a high green, medium sized one. They're pretty difficult to tell when they're this size from your average green tree frog or your squirrel tree frogs. But uh, once they get bigger and in other areas where they're a lot darker, it's a lot easier to tell when it's a barking tree frog. Now they're called barking tree frogs because of the sound they make. It sounds like a dog barking. It's very, very loud. They're one of your louder tree frog species, actually. And these guys rely heavily on savanna habitat and coastal pine habitat. They can typically be found anywhere in pine savannas, but your more wetland areas, they're typically going to be around a good bit more. Now, in places like Florida and Georgia, where these frogs are more common, you can see them around your house. You can see them around buildings pretty often. But this is still the more preferred habitat of the barking tree frog, especially when you've got little ponds in little areas like that for these guys to breed and be with a lot of other frogs. There's a lot of different tree frog species around here, including invasive species like Cuban tree frogs. But you're going to get squirrel tree frogs, pine woods tree frogs, greens, grays, copes grays, I believe. And then we've got these guys, the barkers, and these are the largest native. However, your Cuban tree frogs, which are an invasive species out here, are going to be eating these guys. What a cool little frog. Now, I've noticed they oftentimes have little yellow, they often have those little yellow spots on them, and they're just a really cool looking frog. Now there is one frog species that I actually forgot to mention. It's the pine barrens tree frog. And they would actually look kind of similar to these guys. They got a lot prettier colors. Got a lot of brown and white on them. But that's actually an endangered species in this part of the state. Actually across the board. They're only really common up in New Jersey and places in North Carolina. But in Florida and Alabama, pine barrens are going to be really rare. But they're going to be living in the exact same habitat caught you that time as your barking tree frogs. They're voracious little predators, they'll eat all kinds of bugs, and they actually are slightly more toxic than your typical tree frog. They've got a thicker slime on them, so less is going to be wanting to eat a barking tree frog. Your things like garters and ribbons will still eat them, but birds and some other species might not want to eat a barking tree frog, whereas they would eat a green tree frog. Oh, a really cool little frog there. We're going to go ahead and let this guy go. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to check out the video we just did with the narrowmouth toad, another really cool frog species there. We will see you guys next time. Alright, time to let this little guy go. Alright, see you bud.